Hi everyone, I'm Deb Dietz with SMB Digital Education and thanks for being with me today on Facebook Live. Today we're talking about raising competent parents and your hospital visit. And sometimes you're so focused on your baby and your own labor and delivery, it's hard to imagine that you're actually going to go home with your newborn. So you will not have those fabulous postpartum nurses helping you recover, helping you figure out breastfeeding or nursing and how to deal with sore nipples, um, how to deal with your breast pump, or if you're bottle feeding, what do you do when your breast milk actually comes in and how you deal with sleep deprivation. No doubt there's a lot to learn about your baby, but there's also a lot to learn about your baby when it comes to how do they get their birth certificate? How does that process work? What about their social security number or getting them a passport in case you've got an upcoming trip that you need to plan for? And what happens on the actual day you leave the hospital? So here's a quick tip. Typically, most insurance policies don't require that you actually leave the hospital. You have up until 10 p.m. on discharge day. And your discharge nurses may not tell you that that's the policy. They're going to be looking for you to be on your way so that they can have the bed available for another patient. But you have up until 10 p.m. that day to actually leave the hospital. So that typically means that if you've had a vaginal delivery, you'll be in the hospital for one or two days. If you have a cesarean section, you'll typically be in the hospital three or four days. So what do you need to do before you head home? Well, one of the first things you're going to do on discharge day is you're going to feed your baby and then you're going to send your baby to the nursery. And your nurse may not be happy about that. They may want you to keep your newborn with you. But again, this is about your care and making sure that you're prepared for when you actually arrive home. So you're going to send the baby to the nursery after a feeding. You're going to take a long shower and you're going to take a nap and you're also going to eat a good meal. And typically this means that because you've worked hard going through labor and delivery and probably haven't eaten very well for one or two or three days, have your partner bring a great lunch for you both to share while the baby's in the nursery and get a good meal in both of your bellies so that you have the strength you need for when you actually go home. You did a lot of hard work bringing your baby into the world. You need to make sure that you're fueling your body. And when you're home, make sure you number the, the you limit the number of visitors that are with you at home. The people that are there, maybe your mother, your mother-in-law, a sister, or an aunt, make sure that they're there to work, uh, not just to hang out, but to actually do some work to be helpful to you. And remember, this is probably one of the most important tips, is that you need to rest while the baby is resting. And that may seem strange if the baby's sleeping at two o'clock in the afternoon and that you're thinking it's the middle of the afternoon, I could be doing a load of laundry or starting dinner, preparing for dinner. No, you rest when the baby rests. And remember these words, everything can wait. Everything can wait. We hope you'll visit us and get more information on our upcoming online course, Raising Competent Parents, we're launching the course this November. Please visit us at smbdigitaledu.com. That's smbdigitaledu.com to get more information about our course. We hope you'll like and follow us here on Facebook. Our Facebook page is Raising Competent Parents. I'm Deb Dietz of SMB Digital Education. Bye for now.